He was born Ansel Easton Adams in the city of San Francisco in the winter of 1902. The only child of a once prosperous family on its way down in the world. On the morning of April 18th, 1906, when he was a little more than four, an immense aftershock of the great San Francisco earthquake sent him flying headfirst into a low garden wall, severely breaking his nose, which forever after veered violently to the left. One year later, the fortune in timber his grandfather had assembled in the years following the gold rush finished collapsing completely in the panic of 1907, plunging his father into a sea of financial difficulties and his mother into a depression from which she never fully recovered. He was a lonely child in the gloomy, troubled house by the sea, often ill, prone to fits of uncontrollable weeping, and filled with a restless, surging energy he could not contain. Enrolled without success in one school after another, he often found it difficult even to remain seated at his desk. Abandoning the idea of conventional schooling when the boy was only 12, his gentle, courtly father, Charles, poured all the love and energy he had into his difficult only son, arranging private tuition in algebra and Greek, and letting him roam for hours along the dunes and cliffs beyond the house, anywhere his boundless energy took him. One afternoon in the fall of 1914, when he was still only 12, he began to find a focus for the chaotic feelings that welled up inside him. He was one of those geniuses and uh, sat down at the piano when he was just a kid and within a couple months without a teacher could, could read music at sight. Piano was something that he instinctually fell absolutely in love with. On June 1st, 1916, propelled by a ceaseless barrage of youthful pleadings and entreaties, the family set off for the first time on the two-day journey from San Francisco to Yosemite. Rumbling by train across the shimmering heat of the Central Valley, up through the parched brown foothills of the Sierra until they reached El Portal. Then on by open bus still higher, following the pristine waters of the Merced River ever deeper into the mountains until at length the river angled sharply to the east, and the splendor of Yosemite, Adams later wrote, burst upon us. There was, he said, light everywhere. A new era began for me. His father presented him with a simple, fateful gift, a Kodak No. 1 box brownie camera in its own leather case with a strap. After being shown how the simple apparatus worked, he was off racing from one end of the valley to the other, shooting everything he saw. Domes, spires, streams, meadows, waterfalls, and cliffs. Endlessly trying, his friend Nancy Newhall later said, to pour into the magic little box his wonder and his ecstasy. Somehow he must capture this beauty, somehow convey this opening before him of a new heaven and a new earth. In the fall of 1979, he was honored with a retrospective exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art in New York and featured on the cover of Time magazine. One year later, at a gala ceremony at the White House, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. In the end, even Adams' phenomenal reserves of energy began to fail. In 1983, he visited Yosemite for the last time. One winter afternoon, not long after his 80th birthday, he ventured out to the headlands of the Golden Gate in San Francisco to wander the cliffs and shoreline of his childhood one last time. High up on the rugged ramparts overlooking the Pacific, he came upon an ancient concrete bunker, a crumbling and abandoned relic of the Second World War. It seems, he wrote, that almost anything man-made that endures in time acquires some qualities of the natural. Bleak shapes grow into a kind of magic that, once seen, 
cannot easily be ignored. It was one of the last photographs he ever took. Two years later, on the evening of April 22, 1984, his heart gave out in a hospital near his home in Carmel Highlands. He was 82 years old. Six months after Adam's death, in an extraordinary tribute to the great photographer and environmentalist, Congress set aside an immense tract of wild land southeast of Yosemite and named it the Ansel Adams Wilderness. One year later, in August 1985, a remote windswept peak in the very heart of the High Sierra was officially named Mount Ansel Adams. 